So my first question is like, what inspired you to become a filmmaker? I mean, uh, I was like never really interested in. I think what started happening was. Uh, I think it was during like ninth and tenth standard when like you know internet connection started kind of getting quick faster. So what happened was uh, as a break, a lot of times like I found the best break was to just start watching movies. So they like you know if you're born born up in India and like you don't really have too many movies coming on TV like you used to, but uh, you had very few channels. So like the internet was a great space. For you to just explore and find random things, so there used to be like one website that used to kind of just put a movie post and a description of the movie, like just like the synopsis or whatever. So I used to just like pick any random thing that see looked good to me, and I used to start watching it. And it was kind of nice because I had no concept of what a good movie is or what a bad movie is, or like directors, some dog was nothing. I I didn't care. I just wanted to watch a movie as like a break. So that's how I started. Watching a lot of movies, I never I, even then like I never thought like okay I want to make these things. I was always into photography because of my dad a little bit like just uh, wildlife and things like uh, kind of things like that. But uh, I as I kind of got older, those things start becoming like little less accessible. So I, I I just was just happy taking pictures on whatever my phone or like whatever small camera I had, and uh, then I think like what happened was when I went for when went to college uh, in my undergrad university I was studying economics and I thought like I was very happy studying that but then they had like a film program so I saw like I saw like a light like a film set running like a small one. So I was like, okay, I I got really curious as to what that was. So I just went and stood there, and like all these seniors were uh, shooting films, and I I was just like observing what is happening. And I never like it's that same thing is that first time shock that everyone has when you see a film set, and you're like, oh, what you see is made this way, and that's how kind of like my fascination of filmmaking began. Yeah, quite kind of late, I'd say. So, have you gone to like film school? And what's your uh, opinion on film school? Film school. Uh, so, I did a postgraduate diploma, which was like a one-year course in film. And my undergrad, I did economics, but uh, they had the option of doing like a few courses in film side by side. But I was really interested, so I should just go sit in all their classes that used to happen. So, uh, and I learned a lot. Like I think, like uh, more than anything, like maybe it's not so much like the technicalities of it. It's just more like learning film history and like uh, learning how to think about film, where these people are coming from, what the context is. Because then that's when I started realizing, oh, film is not just about like you know making the story. There's a big context around it. So uh, I'd say for that, those reasons, it was really good. And I feel like I did need those people to help me think about film in different ways, and not just in maybe one narrow-minded way. So narrow mind is like vaguely a negative word, but uh, in a broader perspective. So, yeah. what was the parents' reaction like? Have they supported you? Oh, uh, no. <laughs> Like uh, that's funny because I remember telling my mother like I was like starting to get interested in these kind of things, and she said like I'll stop paying your fees if you do all this. She straight up said like I'll think. So then I kind of like calmed her down, and then what happened was like I said okay okay I'll just study economics only, but like you know I'll and then in, in, on the side I started doing this. So I think like what kind of gave them like a little bit confidence maybe was after I shot like my first short film with like a senior of mine. And then they were like, it it turned out like that was the first film I ever shot. And I was like learning everything as I was we were doing it. Because the CDO that was doing it was a marketing student and I was an economic student. So it was like two people who didn't know anything. So like, okay, we'll learn it together and we'll like just try to do something. And it ended up being like really nice. Uh, at least I liked it back then. And we tried like everything possible green screen, sliders, movement, whatever. 
without knowing it, how what any of that actually meant. And it turned out I so when I showed that to my parents, they were like, they were like, okay, that calmed them down a little bit, saying that okay, maybe I, I do have some aptitude for it. But uh, yeah, that's how like they got on board. So you have made a film, Gal Yuga Shay. So yeah, how was the experience while making it? Oh, that was like, yeah, it was a really intense experience. It's it's been a while since like we shot the film, so of course, but still thinking back on like being uh, in Varanasi, it was really chaotic because it's not so much that like with documentary I didn't have so whatever plan we made every night we'd like like make a plan or like before you do your research you would everything immediately goes out the window the minute you start the day so it so you're just reacting you're just reacting to what's happening around you and Varnasi and we were at like especially for this documentary we were in a space where people wanted to talk so they just like like a lot of the interviews were happening. They'd be like, "Okay, come, we have to show you this house," and then they'll start walking. So you just start walking with them. So you're not the control is not so much in your hands. It's just being able to capture what they are saying and what they want to say. Yeah, that's how kind of, that felt like. So it's a documentary. Like, were you always fascinated by the documentary, or uh, your interest developed later? Uh, so. What happened was like it started off as like a, a course called the Discover India program, where you had to go to a city like in college, and like everyone in the batch, irrespective of what your field was, had to make a research topic because our, school, our college was very into research. So a f- faculty member would kind of pick like an overbroad theme. And uh, you'd have to go and kind of study that, and like you know, there, there's a writing part of it, and documentary was a segment of that. So, of course, like I said, okay, you guys do all the writing and all that. I'll like make the documentary side, but we had a team of about five people or six people back then. So we went and uh, uh, we started shooting uh, mainly Dasha Swamedgarh and Manika Nikagarh. Because the whole, you know, report was kind of about the socioeconomics of those two spaces and like the dichotomy and the duality between them, because they're only 700 meters apart along the thing. But the whole thing is the two different worlds and the people are different, like the hierarchies are different. Everything was different. So we thought, okay, then for the next one, that it was a 10 minute documentary we thought okay for the next one some of us were still interested and thought uh, because we also got like a small grant it was like 60000 rupees or something so no actually it was like 50000 and then like i think we uh, we got 10000 or a little more money from here and there from student film festivals so that we like participated or run it up whatever so we took that money and we went back and we thought okay now let's see like how this you know uh, concept uh, fares if we expand it to the lanes behind. But between like the time, like one or two years that we had like, you know, gone for the first time and went back, everything had changed. So we, we started like seeing like little holes, like this, the buildings that we thought we knew were there were like gone. And we're like, there used to be that little restaurant here. No, are we getting? And then slowly people started talking about it because uh, a lot of times people just because they saw us like with a camera in hand they asked us if we're like asking about the demolition yeah so soon it very very quickly became like uh, we we kept trying to force like what we wanted to shoot and that just stopped happening so at one point we like gave up and said okay this is time to make a new documentary I suppose and then we changed yeah and uh, how much time uh... It took to complete the film, research, shooting, and then editing. Yeah, so it it didn't it didn't take like it could have taken a much shorter time, but because we were, and uh, everyone has like slightly different priorities, and college was fairly hectic. We shot it, I think, in our third year, like in my final year of college, and then uh, 
we didn't really edit it for about six, seven months. And then uh, even like more than that, I think maybe almost, uh, yeah, we it was very on and off. We edited it in small, small bits and then COVID happened. So when COVID happened, I was like, okay, now like, you know, there's nothing to do. And I just sat <laughs> and like, we went through all the footage, task ever and started editing. So once that, COVID bit stuck, it took about like six months, I'd say, to put together everything. Because maybe the footage that we have is just like a minuscule part of the amount that we shot. Because there's probably like in the footage that we have, we have like six other documentaries about different people, different things, all rolled in one. So just kind of trying to cut all of that down and try to think about what we wanted to say. That process took some time. Uh, you also said you got grant. Like, how can someone get a grant, and what was the process of getting? Oh, that? Uh, these weren't like grants. These were, this was just prize money from like film festivals. So it's not like uh, yeah, it's not like some big like Bertha Fund type grant or like yeah, we didn't really uh, submit like a thesis and like apply for it. Uh, it we just submitted that ten minute documentary to quite a few festivals and like we gathered some money through that. Yeah. You have also co-edited co the film. Yeah, yeah. So what was the experience in that? Because as a cinematographer, because you used to do a lot of photography and cinematography, but when you edit that, that's a different technical thing. So what did yeah. you learn there? Uh, so like for me, it was kind of like, because of the college I went to, they made you do everything. So you kind of like got comfortable with sound, editing, all of it. Uh, so it, yeah, it, it, I didn't know any other way. There was no other way. <laughs> like, it's not like I had like a friend who is a dedicated editor who would be like, okay, now you edit and I'll shoot. It wasn't like that. Like you had to do everything. So it was not so much like by choice that I edited the film is like out of necessity. Yeah. And I'd say like, that's like also like a poor excuse because, uh, yeah, I, I just didn't realize that, you know, you have to find people who are ed like, who would edit it for you. And again, it's out of like, not knowing that I just sat and I learned it and I did it. Great, great. Yeah. Oh, that's a great experience. So yeah. are, are you currently doing any other projects right now? Uh, right now? Yeah, I just shot a short film over here, like at school. So that's like just about getting finished. Uh, it's in that like stage where we're planning like the festival run. So I like, yeah, that's there. And then like my own project, which I directed, uh, is again in the works <laughs> because, uh, similar thing. Like I shot it quite a while back, but life does take over because again, I don't really have another person who, who wants to sit and edit it because it's slightly a longer film. And it's also, I find like difficult to find people who have also the time and like commitment because it is a big time investment and I don't have the funds to like, you know, kind of uh, pay an editor to sit and edit it for like how many of weeks or months or whatever. So I'm trying to do it by myself again, little by little piece it together. And uh, yeah, that one's, that that is a fiction piece. It's not so much a documentary. So, uh, that's a fiction piece about it's, it's, it's about a food delivery agent who's trying to slowly get out of like the space in men, like economic space that he's in. And also like trying to find his little passion for whatever, uh, sport that he likes. So trying to balance that world. So this is also like a product of COVID, but just like reading and thinking and writing during that time yeah and yeah other than that like uh uh another friend of mine like who's uh, a close friend of mine and i we developed a documentary so uh, that's a, a pretty interesting documentary about uh Jawai. and it's about like the people and how they kind of use myths to mitigate their reality and because it's like the world's densest population of leopards uh, and still there's zero, you know, uh, 
rep- reports of human animal conflict that there is conflict but like the, just the way that people like think about it and talk about it is very different and that has like you know it's a chapterized thing because we wanted to talk about multiple things because there's eco tourism involved in that there's the you know indigenous rabari people who are from that area it's about them so we will shoot that eventually at some point uh yeah because like yeah the friend who i wanted to shoot with is is also in film school so probably yeah currently whenever the chance currently in us you are doing a course yeah uh, i'm doing like a cinematography course so it's a masters in cinematography uh yeah at uh, chapman university yeah it's it's quite intensive but it's uh, exactly kind of what i wanted to do so when you shoot a film in india and when you shoot a film mm-hmm. in us so what's the difference in what you mm-hmm. see I mean, all the films I've shot in India like have all been very small personal projects with people who are like friends and uh, who are all coming together to make that film. And we, it's not always that we have the resources to, you know, do it like at a very large scale. Like I've shot like commercials and like corporate videos, and that's a whole different world. But when you're shooting like a documentary or like a narrative that you just want to do with your friends, uh, it's very different because you find like like the Indian way. This is a jugad for everything, so you find like that route and you just ride it till it ride it till you you know make the film. Because either you make the film or you don't make the film. There's like really not so much in between. Uh, is like one way I <laughs> I kind of think about it. because if you kept like you know thinking oh you don't have the money you don't have the equipment you don't have this that like like to whatever extent that you can make it make it to the best of your ability in that constraint is what is the way i think about it and comparatively in us because i'm in like this structure it's yeah that's kind of stuff a lot work they'll stay throw you in jail if you like just start filming without permits and like all that it it this fines and there's a huge like uh infrastructure that you need to shoot here so it's not as freeing as it is to shoot in india but at the same time the structure is quite nice and uh, that also only because of the space i'm in of course there are like indie filmmakers making it the way they that they think it should be made which is probably similar but uh yeah like i do find that at least uh, in film school and in the films that i'm shooting even outside film school there's tons and tons of structure there's everyone is doing exactly one thing yeah there's no there's no space for like you know kind of crossovers is what i feel which is also good in some way cuz sometimes there is a efficiency to that also so yeah. you you are currently doing a cinematography course and you are directed a film so what is the major yeah. difference between a filmmaker a director and a cinematographer oh uh, yeah the like i definitely say there's tons of directors who want to be cinematographers and tons of cinematographers who want to be directors is what i feel but like they are two very very different things according to me uh of course you can be like a visual director or you can be a cinematographer who has a good sense of like uh direction but when i'm like if i'm thinking like a cinematographer then i'm not so much worried about how like the performance is coming off or how like you know uh uh like the story is moving all i'm thinking about is how what is the shot saying and how is it adding to the story is the camera movement working is the blocking with in relation to the camera working is like there's multiple other things that are going to be on my mind because i'm also thinking about like the film as like a whole structure like a grammar that runs throughout the piece like okay if is there like if i use this close up here does this diminish my power of like the close up that's going to come three scenes down so i'm i'm taking into like those visual considerations that 
will hopefully help build a story but at the same time it is like when i'm a cinematographer it is a director's medium i do like like talking a lot and understanding like why we're taking each shot so uh yeah and uh, so far like i've kind of been lucky to have like really good collaborators who've been able to talk through the process and we're often on the same page sometimes but like sometimes it's like not going to be like that and sometimes the director would want like you know a shot and you have to get that shot it's not so much up to you but like when i'm directing it's it's different because i'm i i kind of know vaguely what the camera is doing but i'm like looking at the performance and i just want that to come off as best it can through the viewfinder or like through like a monitor or whatever so i'm kind of concentrating on that i'm concentrating on tonality i'm concentrating on uh like e- even like if anything is feeling not right in the space because it's for me it's just about being present and seeing if things are like playing out the way you think they're playing out or if you have to quickly like pivot and you know go with the feeling on that day cuz yeah you can never play it like the same twice is the way i think about it yeah that's yeah, yeah so can you please recommend some films your favorite films it's a list oh yeah oh there's like uh there's quite a lot of films and I, I like <laughs> that's difficult but like if you say like top of my head i'd say like this is film called uh, lawrence anyways by zevid ola that's like a lovely film that like has always been like so i can just like watch any scene from there <laughs> it's great this cold war and ida from paul popkowski those are just great uh great films that i love and then think like uh there's the double life of veronique yeah this is something about that film like it, it deals in so much of the intangible and has so much of a emotion that i think like it it feels great and uh there's also uh the middleman it's uh, i i don't know the bengali i've forgotten the bengali title for it but uh yes yeah, the satyajit ray film uh it's pr- part of the calcutta trilogy like it's pratidwandi that yeah so I, that is, pratidwandi is also great i do really like you know the uh, dilemmas that those films pose especially like because uh, i always love like looking at films that explore like moral gray areas and uh, that's one of those films and uh there's also like what else i'd say like any of wonka wise films but like maybe like happy together that's always like one that uh, feels like a little closer to my heart <laughs> and uh yeah i think those are like some some of my favorite films So my last question is if somebody wants to become a filmmaker or cinematographer like what advice would you give to them Uh I'd say like uh just kind of like you have to be slightly obsessed with it <laughs> this is just like no other way I feel like it, it sometimes it just really consumes you and uh a lot of my friends hate it <laughs> and they'll be like can you can you stop thinking i know you're not thinking about like you know what i'm talking to you about i know you think about something else but like that does happen which is bad but i also feel like sometimes that's the only way that i learn is when i'm constantly thinking about it or as a cinematographer i'm like i'm like constantly thinking about like how the light is working in a space or like yeah so many times so many people will get annoyed sometimes i'll just be like i'll be looking at their face and i'll be like staring at it and they know when i'm look- looking at the light and not them <laughs> a lot of my close friends now understand it so they'll so they'll like snap me back in <laughs> to the conversation that we're having or whatever but uh yeah i'd say like just it's okay to get like slightly obsessed with it i think maybe that's the only way
and uh, i'd say like yeah like it's it, all the cliches that people tell you about is it's true there's like there's absolutely like no way to learn unless you make the mistake and burn your hand there's like no amount of books that will teach you that okay uh, you should cut like this or you should cut like, like you have to like experiment with it even with editing or cinematography or even direction and see really like whatever process works for you works for you and uh this is only like yeah because i when i was like starting out of course there's tons of those youtube videos and like all 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 of that stuff and all those are i feel like great starting points but what works for them is never going to work for you so you can like let go of that idea and just try it yourself yeah